Um, Paul goes on in Romans 8, 15, 16. He says, you do not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So again, we see the spirit is involved in salvation and reassurance that we are saved. We understand that. We understand that when we become a Christian, we are receiving the seal of the Holy Spirit. Now, some will say, well, that's obviously the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's not the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It is the seal placed upon you. It's the ratification that Jesus lives within you, resides there. There is a seal placed there because the Godhead works as one. Isn't this exciting? No. Isn't it? Remember, we're supposed to be vibrant. That doesn't mean froth and bubble. But it does mean that for many of us, something's resonating in our hearts right now. We're saying, wow, this, this is good because something's going to be explained to me that I perhaps didn't know. But you see, there's more than all that. Jesus promised more. He promises more. He said that he would be with us and that he would be in us. In John 14, he promises that that promise that he's with us, or the promise that he's in us, is the promise of salvation. The promise that he will be with us means something more. The promise that he's in us means he's inside. The promise that he's with us means he's outside. It means that he's not just within, but he's without. It means that I am surrounded by a bubble, if you like, of the Holy Spirit. It means that if I have the promise of him, then what Jesus said about sending another counselor comes to pass. The New King James Version translates counselor as helper. We used to call it, and the old King James says, comforter. Comforter is not quite the, the picture, because actually comforter implies that we're just going to have someone going, oh, there, there, it's all right. Did they not like you? Oh, poor little thing. There is an aspect of the Spirit's work that is comforting, but it's not the whole word. You see, the Greek word is parakletos. Parakletos. And I'm not back to budgery guards when I say parakletos. Parakletos means helper, assistant, prodder, that's interesting, advocate, and intercessor. The idea of a prodder, when we talk about the comforter, in fact, they use the word comforter to, to, to it was a military term. And what it would mean is, can I, borrow, can I borrow your crutch? Thank you. It means, and uh, I was going to borrow Sam, but he's sat so far away, so I have to borrow Gareth. Could you just come? <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to stand there, Gareth. I'm now the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord. There you go. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you have to pretend this is a sword. <laughs> the comforter in the garrison was when Gareth was out on the battlefield. Gareth would come running back from the battlefield, a bit battered and bruised, and say, I'm struggling. And the comforter would turn him around and prod him in the back, back towards the battle. And say, go on, get back, <laughs> back there. Thank you. Now, Marriage counseling is taking place at 3 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> now, that's what it means to be comforted by the Holy Spirit, the parakletos, because his mission, his purpose is to empower us to send us out. And so when we talk about him being an assistant, a helper, an intercessor, a prodder, a comforter, all these things, what he's doing is, yes, he empowers us, but he sends us back out. In Ephesians chapter 5, we read these words. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Nice and simple. In the Bible, the word, when it says something is full of something or filled with it, it means given over to it. It means um, controlled by it. So you will read through Scripture, people that are filled with lust, people that are filled with anger. They're controlled by that. Paul says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. But there's more than that, because we would read that and say, well, we've got the Spirit of salvation. But there is more that Jesus promised. He promises us that prodding, that urging, that conviction. 
And so we understand that to be filled with the Spirit then means to be controlled by the Spirit, but there's something more to that. Because the Greek translation of this command means constantly and continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, why would we be told this if it were a one-off experience? If we just have that Acts 2 moment, whoosh, youth camp for me, in August 1980, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I knew I'd been sealed. I knew I'd been saved. I knew that what I did in the past with, uh, and the family influences of, of all the occult stuff and all that kind of thing, I knew that had, had diminished. But in August, some months later, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and then everything really started to change. It wasn't then that I just saw the world through rose-tinted glasses. Remember when you got saved, and everything seemed a little brighter. Everything just seemed a little bit more vivid, a little more... Vibrant. You like that, didn't you? It's there. But when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden, I become a little bit brighter. I become a little bit more vibrant. I become empowered to do that which God has called me to do. And that's the same with every Christian. Now, you might say, well, that's just one verse there in Ephesians, Keith. That, that's just taken out of context. But this pattern was displayed all the way through the New Testament. In Acts chapter 4, verse 31, we read this. Um, and this is after persecution. This is after they've gone out, after they've seen a healing at the beautiful gate. They've seen all sorts of things happening. And then they've been persecuted and beaten and then told not to preach the gospel anymore and all this kind of thing. And they're sent back. And then they, we read these words. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God more boldly. How much more bold do you want to get? More boldly than they currently had. And in Acts, we can, I could give you scripture after scripture. They'll be on my notes, which I'll post on Facebook um, later on. So that's what Pentecostals believe. That the filling of the Holy Spirit is not just for salvation. That's a seal. But there are subsequent experiences to be had and enjoyed by the believer in God. Because he promises that he will pour out his spirit. The word pour there is continual pouring. God is still pouring out the Holy Spirit on his body today. He's still doing it. The only thing that has changed is his body has stopped receiving the spirit because we are not sure we want to go where the spirit necessarily is going to take us. And if we're honest, that's a scary thing. Think of it this way. Jesus is going to Peter and he's calling him and he says, follow me. Peter leaves his nets and he follows Jesus. Later on in their, uh, his, his discipleship, he identifies Jesus as the Christ. Jesus says, no one has told you this, but the Spirit of God has told you this. A little while later, he's, no, Lord, uh, don't be crucified, because if you're cru- oh, it would be awful if you're crucified, and I won't let that happen. Get behind me, Satan. Peter's having an off day. There's stuff going wrong in his life. He then is told, well, people are going to bind you and they're going to take you and they're going to capture you. And we understand from church history that Peter was eventually crucified and he was crucified upside down because he didn't want to be crucified as Jesus was because he didn't think that he was anything worthy of Christ in that way. Isn't that amazing? All from two words, follow me. Just think what what our lives would have been like if Jesus had told you at the very beginning when you accepted him into your life, follow me. Oh, by the way, before you do, here's a disclaimer. I'll use my own life as an illustration. Nobody's going to like you. Your family uh, will be angry with you. Your mother will reject you. You'll be persecuted and bullied at school for this decision. During your journey, you will be burgled three times. On the third time, they will set fire to your house. You'll lose everything and just be left with your clothing. You'll be rejected by girls, which was a big thing for a teenager. Understand this? You'll be rejected by girls. You'll have difficulties. You'll not go to school very much because of the shame you feel in certain areas. You will struggle. You will not achieve your goals of getting A-levels because you just won't get there. But actually, as you go through all that, I'm going to introduce you to a lovely young lady who will become your wife. But you won't stay here. You'll have to go and live overseas. And you'll have to do work that you feel is beneath you. But through that, I'm going to speak to you and talk to you. And then eventually, 10 years after you had a place at Bible College, I'm going to take you there. You'll be told you only have to go for a year, but you're going to have to do three years and then another degree on top because I want to take the monkey off your back of lack of education. And I want to be able to do this in your life so you become a blessing. And then they're going to send you to the Isle of Man, which will be difficult, but you'll love it. They'll send you to Eastbourne. You'll have a challenge there. And then, for your sins, they'll send you to Chelmsford. (laughs) 
Now, had Jesus told me all of that and more when he said, follow me, I wouldn't have followed. And I doubt any of us would have. Sickness will be for you. The world will hate you. You'll have trouble. But with the Holy Spirit in us, we realize those words where Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world, means everything. The Spirit in us and empowering us, we realize that no weapon formed against us can prosper. This is the Bible. We begin to realize that the promises of God that he's declared over us are true.